Hi, welcome back to Superman Garage Workshop. Today, I'm going to show you how I built this portable dust shield. And what does this dust shield do? It eliminates all the dust from my drill press, something I never thought was possible. And the great thing is, this is portable, so I can take it over to my bench and use it with my handheld drill or any other kind of tool where I need dust collection. So let me show you how I built it. Generally, dust collection on drill presses is, is really, really bad. And the problem is, unlike a saw where the dust path is pretty, um, is pretty predictable, a drill press throws off dust and chips in basically 360 degrees. So here you can see without any dust collection, this is what it looks like. Now, if I hold my hose here, which is the way most dust collection works, it still only gets maybe a third of the chips and dust. So I'm going to start this by planing down a piece of three-quarter inch poplar that I had laying around. Um, I want to plane this down to basically half an inch because three-quarters of an inch is just too bulky. Um, and I didn't want to go to the store and buy a half-inch piece of wood. So, And I had this laying around and I wanted to use basically solid wood. So through the planer it goes until I get to exactly half an inch on my calipers. Next, I'm going to cut down the pieces on the miter saw. So that's the piece that's going to make up the corner supports and then the bottom plate and then the top plate. Next, I'm going to go ahead and lay out the uh, where I want to basically draw the three inch hole in the middle of this. Now, this board is about four inches wide and my working area is around four, four by four square, quite roughly. And because my I want to draw a three inch hole with a half inch around, I need to drill the hole in about two inches in and, and two inches across. So two, two, two by two is where I'm going to put those crosshairs. All right, and then over to the drill press with a hole saw, which because it's the bit, only thing I have that can do a three inch hole. And you can see here, I'm trying to drill that hole. And at the same time, I'm struggling with dust collection. And then I'm going to drill the hole in the, in the other part, part as well. So basically a drill hole in the bottom part and the top part, three inch hole. So I need to cut the wood away from the back side of the top part, and this is to allow it clearance for it to slip around the drill bit. Um, so here I'm gonna mark those off to extend that hole all the way back. And then I cut it off at the bandsaw, but of course forgot to record it. Using some three quarter inch stock, I basically uh, made these little blocks, and they're, so these are three quarter inch, and I'm drilling a two and a quarter inch um, a hole through this to accept the hose. So I'm actually making three of these to give myself enough mass and depth for it to hold the hose firmly in place. Next I need to route uh, basically an eighth inch slot about a quarter of an inch in. So here you can see I'm kind of showing where I'm going to make that mark. And then I'm going to go through that eighth inch router bit and route those uh, slots which are going to accept the plexiglass. So here I'm using a push block to help push it through and I'm gonna route those, this is the top portion, which is gonna get a slot routed on three sides. And then I'll go ahead and do the bottom portion, which is virtually the same. It basically gets routed on three sides. One side goes all the way down and the front side only goes about halfway down because it has a fixed piece of plexi. And I'm gonna route one slot on the front edge of the hose block that is gonna face the interior. So the one that's gonna be up against the plexi. Here I'm going to cut the corners, which are they're only half inch by half inch when they're done, and that's kind of unsafe to try to push through the um, through the router. So I'm going to cut it out of a larger piece of stock and get the corners, and then I'll finish them off on the miter saw. Okay, so here's our seven pieces that make up all the wood components of our dust shield. So we have the corners, we have the top piece, we have the bottom piece, and then we have the three blocks which are going to make up the, the support block for the hose. Next, I'm going to go ahead and assemble the uh, hose support block. So these three pieces just get glued together. Um, just keep the orientation um, aligned because you want that piece with the slot to be in the front and face the opening where the plexiglass is going to go. So here I have uh, glued and pin nailed it together to hold it in place, and then I've just screwed it together for support. Next, I'm going to go ahead and put a round over on the hole on the bottom plate. And this is to allow the dust path to kind of flow up and into the dust port without getting clogged into a sharp corner. And next I'm gonna move on to assembling the uh, block or the hose support block to the base. And this just gets pin nailed, glued, and uh, screwed into place, much like I did the, the actual blocks themselves. 
the corners get attached with some CA glue and activator, and that's really all they need. Um, once the top goes on, they're going to get sandwiched in place, and they'll be plenty strong. So next, I'm moving on to cutting the plexiglass, and this is just slightly under an eighth of an inch. I'm not sure exactly how many millimeters it is. And uh, I cut it right on the table saw using the same blade I cut everything else with, and, and it cut right through it. I was, I was worried that it was going to crack or chip, but it worked just fine. So after cutting this, then I moved over to the miter saw and cut it to length. So this, these were cut on the table saw to about three, a little under three and a quarter, so about three and three sixteenths. And then I cut each piece to its final length, which is different depending on where each part goes. And then I moved over to actually assembling the plexiglass in place. So after a test fit, I went through and uh, basically uh, CA glued all the parts into place. So I glued it without activator first, got it in place, and then shot it with some activator after the fact because I didn't want it to bond instantly before it was firmly down on the slot. And then I uh, pit glued and pin nailed the top in place. On the back side here, I'm going ahead and cleaning up the slot with a bit of a chisel because this piece has a, the, the plexiglass slides in and out. So I need to make sure it's nice and clean. Okay, and with that, we're done. So let me walk through here. You can see here the hose plugs on the side where that, those support blocks are, and it fits fairly snug. Now we could put a bulkhead fitting on here for a hose connector if we want, but I didn't have one, so I just drilled a hole for it. So the reason the dust port is off-centered this way is because the, the drill bit spins in kind of a clockwise rotation looking downward. So I wanted the dust port offset to help, you know, sp speed up the velocity of those chips as they're, spe as they're kind of spinning or being tossed out in that clockwise rotation. Here I've got a sliding glass partition on the back. And the point of this is so you can slide it around the bit, basically push the dust shield all the way through the bit by sliding that glass piece and then push it back. So this is where it differs from a lot of other designs I've seen because I can use it away from the fence. I don't have to have this attached to the fence. So I can drill wide boards away from the fence or move this to anywhere else I want to and use it for, as, a, as a basically as a dust shield whether I'm using my hand drill or not. Also, I've added this little tab here. That's why this is extended out so I can use this to drill or basically clamp something down. I might put one on the other side if I ever redo this so I can clamp it from either side. So let's look again at our before and after on our dust. So here's with no dust collection whatsoever, as we saw before. Here's with just a hose in place. And now look at this with a dust shield. So with a dust shield in place, the glass closed in the rear, I attach the hose, and I go to drill normally. And now, because it's glass, I can see the actual bit. It's not being blocked. I can see exactly how I'm drilling. I'm not getting chips thrown out at me. It's not throwing chips all over my workbench. And you can see all those chips are getting sucked right into the actual dust port. If I show this from a different angle, it's easier to see. And here you can see as I'm plunging the bit in, it's sucking all, those, uh, all that dust and chips right into the vacuum hose. And when we're all done here, you'll see there's virtually no chips or, or any dust left. It's basically extracted at everything. And here's a repeat of that. This time I actually have it clamped in place so I don't have to hold it. And you can see it's just uh, sucking everything out. And the, the results are repeatable. I can do this over and over again, and I'm pretty much getting the same result where it's extracting nearly everything and leaving almost no residue behind. As I said before, what makes this design truly different is that I can use it away from the actual drill press. So if I'm actually using my handheld drill, I can use it to still um, get dust collection and drill it anywhere. So I can, here I'm using it on the actual drill press table, but I can take this over to my workbench, attach a hose, and, and then drill a hole. And you can see, as I zoom in here, it's sucking all that dust right into the hose um, and leaving virtually nothing behind that I have to clean up after the fact. So pretty neat, huh? It's uh, started out as a prototype and it's working so well I'm not even going to build another one. I'm going to use it as is. If you guys are interested, and in, uh, leave me a comment. If I get enough interest, you know, I'll put a set of plans out for it for free. Um, but you know, you saw how I built it. It's pretty simple. Um, no, not very complicated. The most expensive part of this build was buying the uh, two and a quarter inch Forstner bit, which I didn't have. Which, for some reason, is a very expensive bit. Like almost as much as my entire other set of Forstner bits for one bit. Go cool figure. Now I have a two and a quarter inch Forstner bit. Guess I'll use it some other time. But uh, I hope you like this video. Leave me a comment. Uh, give me a like. If you're not subscribed, well, what are you waiting for? Subscribe. Press that bell button. Who knows what I'll build next? You won't know if you don't subscribe.
Talk to you later. Bye.